favorite number And I'm her favorite one Well, we don't know where we're going No, but it doesn't matter yeah. It doesn't matter Cause we're going towards the sun But I see it's time to go Push me out so I can grow So I can grow singing out Hang on to your hats, gang. It's been a week. So many things have uh, started and begun, and I'm loving that. It's just been that kind of week that so many things have been occupying my brain, and I am doing my best to uh, make myself a more engaged quilter. So, how are you? I'm so glad to see you. Um, yeah, it is... Uh, it's Saturday, and what a day. I don't know if it's going to rain. I don't know if it's going to uh, be sunny out today. So it's a little bit of everything. But uh, let's get a quick catch up. Since we last met, um, yeah, it's been a new quilt along. Have I told you? So I am so excited to announce that with Curly Seams and the Wool Patch, uh, we're starting a quilt along over on Facebook. And I encourage everybody to uh, jump in. It's called the Adventures Compass Quilt Along. And uh, it's going to be a two month challenge using Robin Long's uh, uh, ruler, ruler system and it's going to be making the mariner's compass and you can choose your own adventure whether it's going to be a 16 point fat compass or it could be a um it could be a skinny it could be a 32 point compass so jump on i'm going to put link in the show notes uh, but definitely you should join along. There's no charge. You get a discount on the rulers and very, very, very excited. So, um, yeah, let's just get into the show. I have so much to share with you. Uh, it's a great day. Okay, I'm going to turn these headbuds out of my ears because I'm getting, um, I'm getting uh, feedback and usually I can just turn the volume down, but it was very distracting. For some reason, it's not working technology, but uh, let me know in the show notes if you're not getting any audio, but we'll, we'll do the best that we can. So, uh, welcome to the Quilt Stream. My name is Chip Connor. I am your host and 
Today is February 26th. It's Saturday, glorious Saturday, and so glad to have you along for the ride. So as I just mentioned, that Quilt Along is gonna be starting on March 26th, and there is no charge for you to uh, join in. You will need a Robin Ruth uh, template, or her ruler system. So that's the 32, uh, I'm sorry, the 16, fat, the 16 skinny, or the 32, but if you head over to robinruthdesigns.com, uh, you can check out what patterns are out there, and then depending on the pattern that you choose is which, um, which ruler that you're probably going to need. But we're going to have a kickoff meeting, we're going to have info sessions where, where there's training on how to do the technique, and right now I think we got around 20 people, so I'm really excited. And I hope that you guys will join us. Um, yeah, jump into Facebook and uh, sign up right away. So, second thing is, is that since we last met, remember, uh, I was preppy, and if you look at me, yeah, you just look at me and you're like, yeah, he's that preppy guy. <laughs> well, I have, was working like a champ this past week, and I'm happy to report that I did finish. So I'm gonna refresh your memory, and here was the uh, the inspiration. There we go. Uh, there, this was my inspiration, and as Tran said, it reminded her of Microsoft's logo. But um, I can't unsee that, and so now I'm gonna call my version the uh, preppy. Um, the preppy Microsoft quilt, and I'm actually in love with it. So that was my inspiration. Gang, let me show you what I actually made. And I have so many windows open, and if I'm ever in a meeting, are you guys ever in a meeting and you somebody shares their screen and they've got like 30 or 50 tabs open? Oh my God, I cannot handle that. I need like three. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah, hey, do you want 50 children to look after or do you want just like one or three? You know, somewhere in there, something manageable. But you know, I have lots of windows open today and it's blowing my mind. So here, here's the, uh, the version that we, that we came up with. And when I say we, I mean me. <laughs> uh, Aaron and I uh, caught some slight sun this morning and I'm like, quick, I need you to take my picture. And so, <laughs> not my picture, the, the picture of the quilt. And it really, really turned out so much fun. Um, and I'm really, it, I mean, like, it looks like the inspiration picture. Uh, let's see if I can get that again. So, yeah. So, from this, the ideation, to huzzah, there's the, the finished quilt top. So now, um, it just has to be quilted and it's in the queue. Now, one thing that was interesting is that, um, I don't know about you guys, but I have been straying away from um, wrapping my head around any kind of border situation. And I've actually never really been a big fan because I always like my blocks, um, whatever I'm making, just to keep growing and growing and growing. So like, instead of adding borders, I, I tend to, in the past, add more blocks. Well. So here I just leveled up my game this week and I'm really digging into how to up my game with borders. And so if you, um, I'm gonna say it a million times, Mod Coins was the uh, pattern that really te taught me um, where to start. And that's gonna be uh, measuring the top of the quilt, the middle of the quilt, and the bottom and averaging the, the measurement for those, and then that's gonna be your top and your bottom size. Now, you also wanna do from top to bottom, on the left, in the center, and on the right, um, because you're gonna to want to get the average of those. And then, it's a matter of uh, folding, and then in half, and then folding in half again, so now you're at quarter marks, and then pinning your border along the top at those registration marks that you've created. And then if you have to ease or you ha if you have to just kind of stretch a little bit, then you can ensure that that border, it's not just for pretty, it's actually squaring up your quilt. And so I am pleased to say that um, I actually did really, really well on that. And so I was also, um, I'm going to take you back to the um the finished so those corner triangles and 
here we go. I'm going to point it out right here. The, all of these side white triangles, um, it's really important. Um, Carrie and I had a great discussion about how we're cutting those. So you could, um, you could potentially um, just cut in half, you know, like whatever size that you need and cut in half and just kind of plug and play. But the problem is, is that on the edge, if you don't cut it correctly, you're actually working with more bias. And all that bias is going to be on the side of the, the quilt top. And instead, what you want to do is do a um, four so that you are, I'm sorry, you want to cut it in, yes, I'm sorry, you don't want to cut it in four, you want to cut it in half. So then that way you have a side and a bottom that are straight of grain and then you have that um, that outside. No, I just said it wrong again. So you have your your side and your bottom. You want those for the corners. That's the corner pieces that are straight of grain. But then if you cut in um, if you cut in quarters, then your straight of grain is going to be on the outside. And I was really really thankful to um, to Carrie because she pointed out uh, this book that she had. It's called the Quilters Reference Tool, and there's actually a whole science to it. There's a whole um, uh, there's a chart in here that tells you how big. So for these blocks in the um, in the Preppy Microsoft quilt, so those blocks were at seven and a half inches unfinished. So I had to calculate what size to make the big square before I cut my side triangles and that way you can ensure that you're you're going to give yourself enough e uh, um, seam allowance so that you're not lopping off those um, those blocks and those points that we delicately uh, created. But this whole book, I mean really it's a nice, it's like 72 pages. Carrie has the first edition, this is the second edition, and of course I got it on Chip is on, and it was around $17. But it's a really, really nice thing. It goes through, um, gosh, it goes through at all the fine point to master, uh, fine points for master piecing. And I love it's spiral brown so that you can just lay it flat. It's not gonna flip your page open. Um, you go from bed, uh, bed quilt sizes, straight set quilts, um, diagonal set quilts, and then yardage requirements, um, cutting bias strips, cutting half and quarter square triangles. And it's just, I mean, like really, it's something you can check it out on Amazon and there might be a preview that you can look at the, um, that you can look at the index, but thank you Carrie for that really, really great suggestion. I'm so happy that, uh, you know, I'm learning, I'm learning. <laughs> Now, uh, I just realized that we didn't get to Rob's roll call, so let's do it. I'd love to say hello to everybody who has joined. Um, we've got, hello, we've got Valerie, uh, Valerie Fisher. She says, woohoo, and I am not at work. <laughs> Fizz, so nice to see you, Fizz. And Fizz and I actually had like a four hour sewing uh, date this past week. She's off the week for uh, for work and it was a lot of fun. Um, Fizz, I learned even more about you. <laughs> we we, we chit-chatted about everything under the sun and it was a lot of fun. And I understand that Melissa P uh, Pizarro, she was like, hey, why do you have to do it so early in the morning? Because <laughs> she's in Australia. Um, I think it shouldn't be six o'clock in your um, in the morning on your time. I think it's around seven o'clock. But it's nice to see you, and I'm so glad that you're here. And we've got Angel over on the East Coast. Uh, I love the Scrappy Angel. She has a great um, storefront, and she is on the make. She gave us some uh, some clues and some peeks into her upcoming. Um, additions to her storefront and they are I mean like there's one that I am just like girl I need it <laughs> I would rock I would rock that bag and we've got Trand again thank you for uh, helping name my latest make the um, preppy Microsoft quilt and then we've got oh big news big news um, Mrs. Kravitz <laughs> Susan, she just got in from looking at sewing machines. But Susan, did you purchase? You just can't look at sewing machines. You actually got a purchase. 
<laughs> so good for you. I'm glad to see you. Um, we've got Janice Gilbert. Hello, Janice. And I think I just followed you on um, either on Instagram or TikTok after all this time. I think on Instagram. And then we've got Mr. Rob Deline of Rob's Roll Call. Uh, early, early back in the quilt stream, uh, when I was saying hello to people, he's like, this is like taking roll call. And so ever since then, it's been Rob's roll call. <laughs> so Rob, happy Saturday. Nice to see you. And we've got Stuart. Uh, he's over in the UK and boy, has he been busy. He's helping out with the, the, the quilt along. He's helping out uh, all of his customers in his store. So check out the wool patch. He, I love the way he, um, the way he tells stories. He's a good storyteller. And then we've got Yoen over at Go Ahead and Make Me. And he is planning some new stuff. I'm, I'm a little bit in the, in the know, but he's planning some fun stuff for his channel. So you gotta nag him and say, hey, When's the next episode coming out? <laughs> uh, Valerie, it is so love to see you. Um, after all this time, she finally got to be on time. And you know what? That's what, you know, show up at your own pace. <laughs> Just show up. And we've got Kathleen. Kathleen, lovely to see you. I always laugh when I look at your uh, Instagram. I think it's you that, uh, that posts the funniest um the funniest things on Instagram and big help on Facebook um, with the Quilt Stream community. Uh, we had a new um, a new member who said, hey, uh, it's Friday, are we gonna have a show? And she's like, nope. <laughs> so Kathleen, thank you. And I think, oh, we've got Sean. Nice to see you, Sean. Sean actually is a knitter. <laughs> he is a knitter and a sewer. And he is, he is so sincere about like what he wants to know about sewing. And I'm so happy uh, that you've joined us, that he's actually going right now for his master's uh, in a program for knitting. So I'm, I'm really uh, impressed, but um, uh, so he had no work at the yarn shop. So he's joining us. So I'm really glad to see you, Sean. And I think I think that's the dream team. Oh, we've got one more uh, popping in. We said Angel, Alice. Okay, so wow, Angel. We have three angels. We have Biz, we have Angel Seraphin, and now we have Angel Alice. How many, I mean, is this like the universe telling us that we have a lot of angels with us? <laughs> so glad to have you, Angel, and I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to remember that one. And then uh, we have uh, Ceylon. Uh, did I say it right? From the UK. Nice to see you. And Diane, she went to the quilt shop today and got some more fabric for the compass. So she is going to be in the um, the Compass Adventure um, quilt along. And I'm really glad. So we're going to have a lot of fun with that. And I think that's everybody. So glad to see you guys. Um, yeah, let's get to today's topic. Oh, one more, of course. We love Mr. Berg. Mr. Berg is all things beauty. I love his quilts. Check him out on Instagram. He is somebody that I aspire to have his design uh, aesthetic. And he did one quilt. And I think, it, uh, Brendan, it was yours, wasn't it? The, that you did the Alaska rainbow and you did that uh, dark background. I mean, like, you just flip things on its edge. And I'm going to ask for your help today. So <laughs> let's do it. And then we've got Lewis Church. You're who I was talking about, the new member over on the Quilt Stream community. And yeah, Saturday it is. So glad to have you. You are part of this dream team uh, on the Quilt Stream. <laughs> All right, so that is uh, Rob's roll call. And that was a little long. It's so nice to see everybody. Um, but let me tell you about today. So we're gonna get right into it. We're gonna be working on the Go, AccuQuilt Go, um, oops, uh, how do I get rid of that one? There we go, remove from the broadcast. Get the mouse away from me. Uh, we're gonna be working on the Go Wildflower Throw Quilt, which I have brought up because for some reason the color with the green screen doesn't like to play nice. Um, but let's take a look. There we go. So we've got um, the Go Wildflower, and it's actually made up of the 
Hattie's Choice quilt block and also just adding for the points on uh, all the outer white points of each block, that's actually a flying geese that's attached. So you've got two basic uh, blocks that, you're, that we're gonna work with. You've got Hattie's Choice, which I have here. So let me show you, it's a lot easier on the tight, but this is Hattie's Choice and it's actually pretty similar. If you have done the um, uh, Alaska Rainbow, this, was, this should look very familiar to you. It's very close. And what's lovely is that how interesting, just by adding flying geese at the tops and on the sides, how we create, um, how we create this whole different, um, um, this whole different look. And it looks like it's actually um, on point. And you would actually, I think, um, I think you would be wrong. The way it's actually built is not on point, and that's the crazy thing, but I love this. Now, if you've checked out, I'm sure you saw the thumbnail image, and I have been on, I have been on ideation for the last, mm, I'm gonna say one day, really solid, no, maybe two days. I have been really burning, trying to come up with how I'm going to um, design this as far as fabric wise and what, what fabrics I want to use. Initially, I was, I was, I don't know about you, but I'm guided by fabric that I have in the house and stash. So for a couple of years there, I was going and I was doing a lot of um, fabric acqu uh, acquiring. And then in the past year, I have just slowed that down to a crawl. And the only time that I'm really buying fabric is when I absolutely need to. And so when I'm looking at a pattern, it's all, you know, it's one part um, design and like what fabrics might go together. And then the second part is actually what's available and on hand. And I'm doing my best not to add to cart. I know, crazy. But um, so the first thing that I was thinking of is that I have a whole bolt. Um, I'm gonna set this aside for a second. Um, I have a whole bolt of white and I have a whole bolt of red. And I'm so sick of, of, of doing red and white. I was just like, oh, I don't wanna do another red quilt. So I was thinking, um, I was thinking that I had this, beautiful fabric and I believe it's already been laundered because it's, I'm really getting <laughs> Carrie when I was showing it to her um, she's like uh, that's really dark and saturated you better be careful because um, that might really want to bleed and I'm like nope it's already been washed I mean you can tell how much it's it's already fraying I've washed it and ironed it so it's good to go and I was thinking that if I did some white mixed with the blue um, and again, I wish I could do a side by side, but I'm gonna make it easy. Um, I would do the white as the background. No, I'm sorry, I would do blue as the background instead of the black, and then I would do the white as the white, but then what I would do is add some yellows, and I actually loved this kind of combination. And then when I was thinking about it, um, and I was really happy, and I did my first TikTok, y'all. <laughs> uh, we have it over, our TikTok account is over on Fiber Hustle. And I made my first TikTok. I mean, like, I love TikTok. So I made my first one and I, I did it. It was like, um, just check out TikTok, look for Fiber Hustle. It's the only one that we have. But I was really thinking that this was gonna be the fabric that I would use. And then it came down to the science. I was thinking, damn it, I don't have enough. Because I really just wanted to focus on the yellow to have for the diamonds in the center. I just really wanted to have this yellow um, be where in place of the green and just have that. But this is a quarter, um, uh, I almost had a quarter pound cheeseburger. It's not a quarter pound cheeseburger. It's a fat quarter bundle. <laughs> I must be hungry. Um, but I didn't have enough to really go around because um, the yellows do vary. And 
it was like mm, I don't want it to I don't want it to to do that and like I really wouldn't have enough to go a long way so I had to re-strategize then I was like oh god you know I was trapped in the the fabric slash laundry room for several hours and just looking at all my choices and then you know, I'm like, I don't want a directional fabric. I don't want this. So let me, let me jump to the chase where I went to. I was thinking that I have this Bohemian Rhapsody, beautiful, some of my favorite, absolute favorite fabric. And I was like, there is some yellow for you. If you want, um, and I was like, okay, so I would do white. I would do a nice white background and then have that pop of yellow and then the uh, the blue and I'm loving it but I'm not sure if this is the one it's the whole it's the whole dating scene is this the one <laughs> so I am waiting and actually um, I'm gonna ask you guys to help me decide because I have another option so plan a is the white background with the yellow and the blue so the blue would still be the blue would still be um i'm sorry the white would be the 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 overall background and then you would have yellow for the diamonds and then you would have blue for the tips um or vice versa but some kind some kind of combination of that if that doesn't work for you guys i have the second option is let me show you the uh inspiration the inspiration from uh, the, the, the background. And if you marry that, plus, um, plus think of like Little House on the Prairie, uh, uh, Travelers, you're in a stagecoach and you're going to your Aunt Agnes's house um, for uh, several months and to go live with her because your, your family can't stand you anymore. But this Travelers, this vintage 1800s um, Travelers bag, I was like, Oh, you know what? I have some crazy lovely um, damask, is it called damask? Um, damask fabric that is going to, um, is going to come to 2022. We're not gonna stay in the 1800s, but what do you think of this? We're gonna start out with some chambray denim blue. I love this. This is, um, this is by, um, connecting threads and it's their their chambray tonals but this is their denim color and you know what denim can actually go with everything we're going to need a wide shot because i have a lot of fabric to show you so knowing that this is going to be the overall and then everything starts working in pairs so i'm really instead of having a constant flow or a color scheme throughout the entire thing we're going to have pairs of real um, lovely contrasting colors. So there's 18 total blocks. Um, let me go back to the pattern. You might have it memorized by now, but there's 18 of these blocks. So I actually came up with six different combinations for, um, let's go wide. So we have 16 different combinations I'm sorry, um, six different combinations that I'm really excited about. And everything just seems to go with the denim. And I thought, if I'm gonna bring it up to modern, and I just love this. I mean, like, I think this could be a very, very modern quilt that is inspired by that uh, 1800s travel bag. And the damask, um, Damask, I can never say that word right. Um, I just think it really plays. So here's, here's um, before you guys make a, a, a decision on that, my question is, is so I also have, um, I have some orphan blocks when I was working on a quilt like a year ago or something. And basically you have this large print and this is, this is more of a design question, but you have this large print and I made these flying geese um, blocks. And one of the comments that somebody said was that this is so small that you really don't get to appreciate the full print um, of the Bohemian Rhapsody. 
And I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of torn because when you look at the Hattie's Choice, um, the Hattie's Choice, so these are going to be the sizes of the, of the um, pieces. So when I'm looking at Hattie's Choice, I have this center that's going to be your center diamond, and then here is an example. So it's you're not going to get this whole thing. It's not going to be fussy cut. It's going to be just a little portion of it, but I think I'm okay with that. Um, what do you guys think? So uh, I know we're on a delay when we're going live, but I would love to like get some um, some choices. Whether I go with this and white, so it would be the blue and the yellow and the white, and that is the um, Bohemian Rhapsody, or go with this. And this is um, this is actually put out by I believe. Um, QT Fabrics, but it also is Ink and Arrow, um, a subsidiary of uh, QT Fabrics, or are they uh, a partnership under a different name? I'm not quite sure because when I was looking back in time uh, and I went on the internet, this was coming up as QT Fabrics instead of Ink and Arrow, so who knows? But this is called the um, June B Fox Ink and Arrow, and it's their... Uh, I think I pulled it. I might still have a window open. Um, it's harder to come by. Even when I got it maybe a year ago, it, was, uh, it wasn't the easiest thing to find. It's the Lila um, Damask. Damask. When I look at it in English, I can, I can understand it. Um, but uh, the Lila Dam Damask is the line and you can see that it's just so i mean like it's got these these beautiful colors and you would think mm, a little scary together but i actually think it, it's lovely and it works so yeah let me know um in the in the in the chat or in the comments below because i'm going to be working on it uh, all this week so let's see if we've got some uh some boats already um uh, bop, 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 bop. Um, so Valerie, she loves, loves the damask pattern fabric. Um, and she says uh, damask all the way. So that's a good vote. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. And actually, Kathleen, uh, these none of these are batiks, believe it or not. None of these. So they're all... Um, the regular quilt, quilting cotton. <laughs> and Susan says, your TikTok was awesome, <laughs> was fabulous. And <laughs> I called up Carrie over on the, the Creative Obsession. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, I just did my first TikTok. <laughs> I, I know, I'm a nerd. Um, okay, and yeah, so we don't have, okay, so, um, Salon says that she likes the mixed colors, so that would be voting for Team Damask. And also, Sean, he's loving the Damask. Um, yeah, and now, Yoen says, hey, I wouldn't go too crazy with too many colors, and I actually kept some out, but I know that you're kind of over the rainbow and I'm here for it. So I know it's just a matter of like how, how many colors you actually do want to run with. Um, but Diane says those, um, those damasks are beautiful. And yeah, so I might, I haven't made up my mind. So um, put in the comments so that I can go back in time and I can see where, where I land with that. So with that, let's go ahead and um, let's work on the, the, the quilt block. So I'm gonna get this stuff out of the way. My iron is already ready for us. And actually, uh, one thing either I was thinking of is like, boy, this would be fun if you did, um, if you did more of like a paisley kind of feel, like red, white, and blue paisley in some kind of combination, I think that would be fun. When I was um, when I was in my bedroom and I 
uh, still haven't opened up these these handkerchiefs, um, but I was like, boy, this would be a, um, a fun pattern. And I think on fabric.com, which is owned by uh, Chipazon, um, they actually have some red paisley for $6.99 a yard. And I was like, oh my God, I have to have that. But I didn't buy it. <laughs> All right, so getting rid of what we don't need. We do need the pattern. And you can get the this pattern on AccuQuilt.com. I put a link below and it's free. So I'm not doing any um, any cutting into my fashion fabric um, because I wanted to work on a block that is just going to be considered our pancake. Um, <coughs> excuse me. The first um, the first quilt block tends not to turn out right. So I would much rather use some some fabric and just get myself back into the rhythm. I have made the Hattie's Choice quilt block once before, but it's been a very long time. And so I was like, when I was looking through the directions and I was like, hmm, yeah, I think I remember how to do that, but it's always good just to do a practice block. And I really wasn't ready to commit to, um, to using the fabric until, I, I'm, until I've made up my mind. So for this, um, I'm gonna take you on the, um, down here and, you're gonna use the Hattie's Choice, which is going to, uh, and I love that they, uh, for these bobs, the block on boards, they've labeled them for you for the pieces. And then you need two, um, you need two dies for your flying geese. So this one, there is a, um, there is a blade in between here and on all the outer peaches. Uh, pieces so you get four of those so for each block I only need um, Actually, I only need two because of the way that the, the the block is actually laid out and assembled So I only really need two of those but I'll go ahead and make more or I have made our um, More just because I know that if I wanted to practice another block boom You already have it done. So you need these for your flying geese and then you're gonna have this attached to the flangies. This is just um, a two inch square, um, corner square. So let me lay these out. So as I've said, I've already done half of the block. And then what that really comprises of is that you have a kite block. You have two of those. And then you have your diamonds. So we're gonna put a diamond here and a diamond here. And then you've got your, as Stuart likes to call these, this is the snow cone. And so those snow cones go here and here. No, I'm sorry, here and here and here and here. And you've gotta be careful when you're creating these because you, if you start like this, it's automatically, um, it's wrong. So these two sides are actually longer than this side. So we want the short end up top. And then we're gonna have our flying geese, which is, here and here. And I've already made one of those for the other side. So that's going to go here. And it couldn't be, I mean, like this is a fun project. Again, gang, we are dealing with bias. So we're going to be on our best behavior so that we don't, um, we don't stretch the fabric, but I mean, really we're we're set to get um we're set, set to get sewing so the way i like to attack is to first do my um my diamond with these so i'm going to do these two pieces and then these two pieces and then i'm going to jump over to my first um half square or uh yeah quarter uh, this is a quarter square triangle i'm going to put that together so let's work on those 
And then what I love about the what I love about these um, the the die and the block on board is that you really when it's being cut, I've got all of these notches that are already cut out for me. Uh, if I was cutting, I don't think in my life I have ever cut myself uh, cut for myself any notches. And what's lovely is that you can just lay them and it's your eye is sh is being pointed out, hey, this is where they should line up and we can just get to sewing. So I've already got a uh, starter, um, a little piece of starting fabric just to draw my fabric in as I sew, which is good. Then what's lovely is that, I don't know if you can pick it out, but here as I'm as I'm laying this in front of the needle, there's a notch right here where it ends, and that's actually where my quarter inch, um, my quarter inch should start. And so, really, I mean, like all of the guesswork is out. And as long as I keep that nice quarter inch seam, it's going to be lovely, and it's going to finish out right here at the other point of that notch. So that's one, and we're going to do the same. Again, we're going to line those up. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to do my work, start working on my flying geese piece. And for this one, I'm actually working on matching the white and the black at the corner here. On this side, there's actually going to be some uh, hangover and that's perfectly normal. That is what we want. There we go. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna give these a quick press and we do absolutely do not want to iron. I am just gonna press and I'll set my seams first. I'm missing a piece. No, I'm not. And then I'm just going to use my finger just to get it in place. And then hold the heat over. And this really is the lovely thing. Um, about using these notches that are already done for me because when I press this, everything just lines up when, it, when I open up the fabric. So that is, that is good. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> All right, so, so that's what we want. We want this line to um, to be all straight and same thing over in here and then we've got our flying geese that is looking really good all right so now we're going to go to the second side of those and then one thing i should add is that i'm going to show you on the um the needle cam but when i'm pressing these ordinarily with this particular um, or actually with any block, I normally am going to press to the dark side, but you notice that I actually pressed to the light side. And the reason being is there's going to be a second half. So when that is flipped over, I'm not going to actually get to see where that point is on, uh, when I'm sewing from the back of it and I'm assembling it with um, another part of the block. So let me show you. So when I sew this, 
uh, make sure my orientation is correct. I'm going to quick show you why pressing open to the light side is actually going to play in your favor. And if memory serves right, I think Stuart was calling these the um, ice cream cone or something like that. It's like an ice cream cone to him. Okay, we're going to do our other part of our flying geese. And then we'll press those open. So on the on the flying geese, that's the one I will press to the dark side. No issues there. And I think Sean, we were having uh, Sean, we were having this conversation about, um, and I think you made a comment on one of the earlier videos that about this, this exact topic about, um, pressing this open. So when we're, when we're constructing these and eventually there's going to be, um, the flying goose or the flying geese that's going to, that's going to come up to the top of that. And when I'm doing that, I'm actually, I can't see through the fabric. I can't, I don't know exactly where that, um, where the apex of this point is. So what I do, knowing that I can sew from, have this side up as I'm um, sewing the flying geese, uh, let me put it back. And we're not, we're actually not there yet, but um, with this now all completely exposed, I can see exactly where that, um, where that apex is. And I'm, I, there really, I would have to be trying not to hit that apex. And so uh, that it just works for me. And then that way I don't have to go back and I don't have to rip out if I lop off that point. Um, but if I had pressed towards the, the dark, and then this would have all been hidden and there's just no way for me to be able to see where that apex is. And chances are I will end up having uh, lopped it off. So by just pre by pressing it open and yes, it is to the, uh, to the light. It actually helps me have that perfect point. And in all reality, you don't really see I'm pressing hard and you really don't see the red popping through. So that is my, my little trick that works for me. Uh, let's go to the next part. So once I've got, once I've got those made, now I'm ready for uh, the kites to be added. So I think about, um, I, I just got myself into the rhythm that I always start with the right. And then as I'm adding pieces, I'm adding to the right. So I'm going to have these two marry and these two marry and the kite is always on the right. Uh, or actually you could say the, um, the diamond is always on the left or the top, whatever, which, but it all needs to be the same. And then when everything goes together, uh, you'll have every other one right where it's supposed to be. So let's go ahead and sew this. Get my starter. And now, let's get that perfect quarter seam.
Okay, one more. Love it. Okay, I'm going to give those a press. <clears throat> and if you're more comfortable, because we are um, on this particular project, you are dealing with almost like a lot if not all, bias on every single piece. So if you're more comfortable to use pins, then I would say pin away. Um, if you're more comfortable um, using piecing glue, then I would recommend that. Whatever's gonna get you to that, um, that, consistent, that consistent block, you're, it's gonna do you that favor. All right, so now let's look back on the down. And I've got those two done. And now what we want to do is marry these, and then we'll marry that piece to this one. This really is a fun block to do. to move a little bit. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. I love these. You can never go wrong with diamonds. All right, we are closer. It's it's coming together. We've got that coming, and I actually love this. It reminds me, it's very like playing cards. Now, here is where um, we need to be really, really cognizant of making sure that we're lining up the center as best as we can. Um, because we want in here, uh, I'm going to take you to the needle. <clears throat> what I'm after is for this, this point at the bottom here to marry that point. And so my trick that I like to do is I'll take a, uh, I'll take a pin to the back side, the one that's on top, and then I'm looking for I'm looking for that apex to the join. Ow. I just poked myself. And sometimes my, there we go. So now I've got my pin that is all the way, I couldn't be any more nestled into that top corner. And now I'm going to take that and poke that through the apex on the other side. And now I know that I have married, I have married those um, exactly in the center. And that's the only pin that I'm really feeling the need to, uh, to keep. So now I'm going to marry those and we're going to get back to 
sewing. This is the part of, of sewing that is, I think the most fun for me is like, once you know the trick, then it's, it's just, I like taking the time to, to do that. Um, because it just, it just shows, um, a lot of care and, um, especially with all of these colors that are definitely going to compete and it's going to be very striking. It'll be very easy and, and um, it'll be very apparent if they don't line up or if they get lopped off. Your eye is not going to say, mm, that really doesn't exist. Your eye is going to tell you the truth. If the points don't meet, you can't fake it. And again, that one piece wants to keep shifting. So I'm going to be careful. All right. Huzzah. Uh, it's close. I don't know that it's perfect, but it's close. And I will definitely, um, I will actually call the baby ugly if it is. Now, one thing I do need to do is to make sure that my seam, I'm going to take the, the center of the, um, I'm going to take the center of this block on the back and I'm actually going to try to spin my seams by opening it up a little bit. And then that way it'll have a better chance of laying flat for me. So I just got to find where that center is and pop maybe one or two stitches. And then it should just start spinning. There we go. Lay down. There we go. There we go. I was doing it the wrong way. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna give that some, I'm gonna give that some love. And then when I'm, when I'm doing this part of the block, I do not, like I'm not pressing outward or anything like that uh, because this really could get out of shape real quickly. Um, so we wanna be careful not to distort that block. Okay, not the most beautiful. And again, I promise, this is why we do the test block because we want, uh, the first one is always a little nasty and um, it's, it's gonna look like a pancake. It's not gonna be perfect. This one's pretty good, uh, but I know that I could do better. Uh, but those points, they definitely do line up. And then when we're constructing this particular, um, this particular quilt, then we need two of these. I think I already did. I did part of the, the flying geese. Okay. And then I just need to add two other little squares. And then that's actually creating. So when I'm creating the block, I'm actually making rows this way, even though when I go to the actual uh, pattern itself, it looks like everything was created on point. Um, by you would naturally think, oh, I'm going to um, just put everything on point and do your, your rows that way. And that's actually not the way that it's constructed. So we're going to just for this row, we would just do a whole row of these. And then we would do an individual, um, an individual row of just flying geese that would take care of this and take care of uh, the just below on the bottom. So let me put these together.
Okay, <clears throat> give these a press and I'm pressing to the outside and then we get to we get to make this final but I love the way this is turning out. Now when I'm working on joining these two pieces as I said earlier we want to make sure that we're not lopping off the uh, the tip of this, um, the diamond or that apex there. So I want to make sure that's one thing that I'm going to uh, be careful of. And then the other thing is, is that we want to actually make sure that we're joining and we have both of these, um, these two whites that are going to marry. So those should play nice. Okay, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, mm, do I want to, do I want to go to the trouble of pinning? And I think I'm going to be okay. If not, you'll see why you want to pin. I'll unpick it and we'll do it again. Okay, so I've got that first part married. And now I want to ensure that these are going to match up nicely. And I'm right over um, the apex there. And then I'm going to check my work. Um, Butimus. I actually feel like I could have gone, I think I went a little bit, I went a little bit too shy. There we go. Perfect. That's what we want. All right, now I'm going to do the second one. Oh. Oh, that was dangerous. So I really wasn't thinking about it. Um, I should have the with my diamond. I should have that uh, that side up, because then I can see the apex. I am not down for any danger today. I will say on the um, on the preppy quilt, and just as the, as I'm working my way through this one again, I will I will pin when I'm working on on these little steps where I'm, I'm matching seams. I definitely will use pins because um, this looks really good, but it's not great. And I what I loved about um, what I did on the preppy quilt, um, <clears throat> all of my my seams were masterfully pieced together, if I do say so myself. And that was because I, I, I took the time, I didn't use uh, wonder clips, I definitely used pins, but just taking that care and comfort, um, I can see where on here, there's, it's really good on one side and then kind of nasty on the other. So it would have been better, and it's funny, I did it on, on the same side on both. So <clears throat> if you look here, and this is me being hypercritical of my work. So here I have a perfect, perfect, perfect seam. And here I have a perfect, perfect seam. But here there's a little bit of overhang on that side. And actually on this, there was a little overhang. If I had pinned, it would have turned out absolutely perfect. But 
otherwise, I mean, like this is a really fun block to make. And when you're starting to make block after block after block, you know, you know the drill. It's going to go a lot smoother and you'll be just humming right along and you'll be able to make that. But I think this really is, I think it's striking. I really, really love this combination. And is that the third option to go with the, the like more of like, um, uh, da, 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 da. I don't know. I'm getting, I'm getting, uh, playing cards a lot out of that, but I really like it. All right. So, uh, we are just about at time. I'd love to, uh, check in with the room again and see what, uh, <laughs> see what the news is. <clears throat> Ooh, Valerie, she bought a big set of Paisley's, uh, Paisley fabrics on Chipazon, five colors. <laughs> Yay, I love, uh, I love me some uh, Chipazon. And actually, Valerie, did you get it through um, Amazon or did you get it through fabric.com? It's actually, Amazon owns fabric.com, but um, I find that the, they're not the fastest on fabric.com as if you were buying it on Amazon. I don't, I... I don't know if they're using a different warehouse, but it's a lot of, um, it, it's just, you know, how it is. And Fizz, she says she's having Alaska rainbow flashbacks to sewing all of those blocks. <laughs> and Stuart says, yeah, I remember those ice cream cones. <laughs> um, da, 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 da. And then Sean says he does, uh, it was making perfect sense that he does press it open and my points are all over the place. Uh-oh. We can fix that. And then Melissa, she's saying that she, she does use a pin to help her if she can't see the point and it takes a bit of prep though. All right. And <laughs> Sean is saying, I mess up my points from here on out. Um, I mess up my points from here on out from sewing the quarter inches and halves together. So wait a minute, you're not committing. You're not, what are you committing to? <laughs> I'm confused. And then thank you, Yoan. He says, my points are on point. And they really were with the, um, with the preppy Microsoft quote. They were. And... Now, Stuart, instead of using uh, the pin, he takes the tip of his tailor's awl, and I think this is what you're, you're talking about, is a tailor's awl, and it, you can find that point, and then you can go in. And then some people actually sew, like I will use my, uh, my tweezers wherever they've gone. They're usually right at my side or on the floor. But um, I don't use a stiletto, I use, um, I use my, my tweezers, but a lot of people, they like an awl or they like that, um, that traditional stiletto. <laughs> and yes, if the points don't meet, you must repeat. <laughs> that is, I can't tell you how many times I unpicked because of my foul, uh, my foul play or because I wasn't paying attention or it was like, and then I know there was a couple of blocks I had to do three times just because I would make the same stupid mistake over and over and over. And that's what kind of sewist uh, and quilter I am. Uh, boop, boop, boop. And then that's good to know. People are getting some, uh, some new insight, some good, t uh, good tips today. I didn't know how to do the middle on an eight pointed star newbie to quilting and we're all babes in the wood at some technique. So it's just a matter of everybody, you know, the race is happening at different times and we're all learning. I, this person's learned it way up here. This person's learned a different trick, but like we're all on the same racetrack and that's the fun of it. And Lewis Church, you're in my camp. Uh, he says he loves getting ideas and tips. He is self-taught and it's a constant learning experience. Love it and love my quilting friends. So that's exactly how I feel. I mean, like gang, I learned 
uh, a vast majority of what I know via YouTube and via uh, my friends, like the friends that I've met through, um, through quilting online. <laughs> All right, um, okay, so that is about all of the uh, the chiming in. I am gonna ask, so like, it doesn't hurt. Like and subscribe. Uh, it's always, if you took the time to enjoy, I would love for you to subscribe if you would like to come back for more. Um, but go ahead and like the video if you're already subscribed. And in the meantime, um, I'm gonna be working on this week on this quilt. So I need to know, is it going to be yellow and blue, um, and this is the um, Bohemian Rhapsody from QT Fabrics, or do I do the Damask, and I, I'm like, I am so in love with this, but that'll go with the denim. So like, let me know in the comments which, which way, which path should I choose, and you might see, I might make some TikToks <laughs> of me doing some crazy sewing this week, but I'm gonna make a mean attempt to have this quilt top finished this week, but I'm glad you guys uh, got, got along on the way. So that's it for today. Uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Keep on quilting. Don't forget, sign up for the uh, Quilt Along, the Compass Adventure Quilt Along. Join us over on Facebook. Uh, it doesn't start until March 26th, so you have plenty of time, um, and you get 10% off all your purchases through RobinRuthDesigns.com. We don't get anything for you uh, buying or participating. We just want to have a cool kids club. That's it. So that's it for now. Uh, until next time, have a beautiful time quilting, my friends. Bye-bye.